know you're hungry for MasterChef. Nobody's safe in this kitchen. Catch all new episodes Wednesdays and check out our other Fox programs. Gordon Ramsay's 24 Hours to Helen Back, Beat Shazam, and The Four. Challenge! Only on Fox. Tonight on MasterChef. Halibut. It's a Gordon Ramsay masterclass. The way Gordon's moving is like a surgeon at work. And Damn it. only the sharpest home cooks. Looks like it's been mauled by a cat. Will make the cut. This looks like trying to clean a fish with an ax. Then a shocking twist. Two more talented cooks will be leaving. Shakes up the Master Chef kitchen. That will happen right now. Chef, I never envisioned that this would happen. Welcome, everyone. Gordon's got five aprons left, Aron's got four, and Joe's down to three aprons. But I'm ready for top 10, I'm ready for top five, I'm ready to represent Joe in the finale. How's everyone doing? Doing Good. all right, Chef. All right, guys, your next challenge is what we call a skills test. <laughs> Tonight is all about one unique protein, a truly versatile protein. It can be broiled, baked, or grilled. I'll be right back. Oh, no. Where is it going? Be worried. Took four strong men just to tackle that deadly beast. <laughs> oh. <gasps> what the hell? What is that? This is a big ass fish. I have never seen a fish this big in my entire life. I don't even know where the hell it got that fish from. It looked like a dinosaur or something. I don't know. Look at it. Come on. Hundreds of dollars worth of delicious, incredible, fresh halibut. Wow. wow. <laughs> Tonight, each of you will fill it an entire halibut and portion it out evenly. This is a skill I expect chefs in my kitchen to execute flawlessly. Sure. And now it's your turn to master it, because I'm about to show you how. Yes. OK? Watch carefully. Flatfish, one of the most difficult fishes anywhere in the sea to fill it. First off, sharp knife halibut. It's got four fillets. One, two, three, four. I'm going to start the knife cut from the top of the head, slice through, gently use the tip of the knife, come down to the top, and there's a line there that'll help guide the center of the fillet. So follow that line to the tail, and then fingers down, and then pry. Really important, make sure you use the filleting knife. We need that flexibility to go in and under. This really ensures that you've got a nice, clean cut. Carefully slide the knife across the bone. Hold the fillet down, off, and let the knife do the work. Oh, my God. And from there, fill it number oh one. Oh, my God. Amazing. Again, find that bone and come through. Again, hold the knife nice and flat, pull back, and bend that knife. Oh, my God. Wow. Fill it number two. Oh, my God. Now, turn it over. See that little thin line there? That's the indication where the actual middle bone is. Run your fingers down. And keep that knife against the side of the bone. And just gently. Lift it up and then off. Again, clean. Oh my gosh. A little bit more difficult, this one, because it's so much thinner. Hardly any meat on that tail part of the carcass. Carefully pull the fillet back, bend the knife, and then back down and off. Fillet number four. Wow. Oh my oh. God. Carcass nice and clean. At least you want to see no flesh on there. Watching Gordon Ramsay fillet this fish is amazing. And now we start our portions. One. I'm seeing how precise he is, how much finesse he has. If he was in my class, he'd have an A+. I'm just hoping I can do it as flawlessly as he can. And there we have 16 fillets. But we're not done yet. Mm. The cheek. And this is what we call the sort of oyster out. Beautiful, majestic cheek. And that is how a MasterChef fillets a halibut. I have never been this close to a halibut in my life. But I have filleted fish before. 
I want to show off my knife skills and show Gordon, my mentor, that I can do this. You're going to have only 20 minutes to break down this halibut. We want even portions, and it needs to be as clean and effortless as Gordon's demonstration. If it's not up to our standard, you will have to cook again in order to stay in this competition. Is that clear? Yes, yes Chef. Your 20 minutes starts now. All right. Yeah. Get some speed on, y'all. Come on, let's go. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. <laughs> this fish is huge. I mean, this is the largest protein I've ever got to butcher in my life. Ooh. All of this pressure, it just gives me so much anxiety. I'm freaking out. Let's go. This means so much to me to get this right, and I don't want to mess it up for my teacher to run. Halibut's one of the most precious jewels from the sea. Yeah, even now at my restaurants, I let only my sous chefs actually fillet fish. It's that important of a skill. It's not a fish that's going to be shredded and cooked. So the presentation and how precise you are with the knife is key. I can't find the, the bone. It's really hard. Guys, this is a very, very difficult challenge. Can anyone actually get through this perfectly? Yeah, for me, the secret about this skill set tonight is that level of care, the way you handle, the way you bend the fillets, the way you bend the knife. You can't tear this. Yeah, You right. can't puncture it. You can't rip it. You've got to let the knife do the work. It's like an operation. It's precision beyond belief, and you know the yield from all those four fillets is crucial. Ooh, this is hard. Guys, five minutes gone, 15 minutes to go. I'm pretty nervous right now. You know, usually I have a lot of confidence, but I've never filleted a fish. I live in Iowa. We don't get fresh halibut, and so I got to stay focused and, and really get going on this. I feel like because I'm one of the younger ones here, uh, I might be a little bit um, underestimated in this competition. I want to show that I can really come up with some uh, great skills. My dad's actually a butcher, so I've picked up a couple things from him. I've never filleted a fish this large, so I'm just taking my time and making sure these fillets come out beautiful. <sighs> the type of fish that we eat, you know, in Louisville, Kentucky, are catfish and redfish, those type of things, but never a flat fish. If I don't get this fish right, then I'm going into the elimination test. I've been in elimination over and over again, but I, I just want to rest for a day. I would love to be on the balcony. Just coming up to halfway, 10 minutes to go. We should have our fillets off by now. Well, let's go. Damn it. I'm mastering this fish. Oh, come on. I've filleted fish before, but I wouldn't say that it's something that is in my wheelhouse or something that I am very, very good at doing. Living in Wisconsin, that's not an opportunity that I have a whole lot, um, is to cook and kill and clean fish. So I'm down there in the trenches with everybody else today, I think. OK. Other side. So, some impressive uh, performances out yeah. there. Caesar. That guy's mm -hmm. discipline with the knife is extraordinary. There's still fish left on the carcass. Chelsea, just breathe. I'm trying. I know. I know it's hard. Just breathe. Chelsea's freaking out. Yeah, well, Chelsea, well, I think she's just struggling to get her head around the size of this thing. Come on, Chelsea, you've got this. No. Three minutes. Let's go. Let's you've go, got guys. to start portioning, guys. Speed up. Let's go. Come on, Jerron. You got this. Emily's look very good. Emily's look wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for she finishing time. She's got one more big fillet to clean yeah. there. And she has to get the oyster. Emily, hurry up. There's some of the tail left. <sighs> We're looking for perfection, precision, technique, finesse. Don't forget those oysters. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Ooh. Come on. Let's go, guys. Come on. Come on. Let's go, guys. Oh, my God, they're too small. 10, 9, 8, eight 7, seven six, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and, and stop. stop. Hands in the air, knives down. Well done, all of you. That was a very difficult skills challenge, breaking down an entire halibut. Let's take a much closer look. Cesar, have you done this before? I've done it with smaller fish, but never at something this size. This is a commanding looking fish board. Thank you. Let's check out your fish carcass. Man, wow. Everyone take a look at this. This is a masterclass in halibut filet. It's perfect. It weighs nothing. It's a feather. 
Good job. Thank you, Joe. Good, good job. Okay, let's check out the chicken bowls. You did leave some good portions of fish. How many portions did you get? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 20? Plus the cheek. Nice portions, very consistent. I'm impressed. Aron certainly has himself an excellent student in you. Good job, Caesar. Thank you, Jeff. Very good. Samantha. Chef. Let's have a look at the carcass. Um, it was really difficult. Not very good, visually there. This here starts to identify that you're ragged with the knife. It's all flaky. Yeah. And a lot of fish left on the carcass. Mm -hmm. And what happened here? I didn't get to those. That yeah, one's just yeah. ripped. It's absolutely awful. Looks yeah. like it's been mauled by a cat. Yeah. Hole through there as well. Sloppy knife work. Big disappointment. Trimmings. Here's the other issue. Look how much fish is left on that skin. Look how thick that is. Portion-wise, a little bit jagged, a little gash at the end. And look how thin that is, because half this flesh from the fish is left on the skin. Yeah. Not good. Sorry, Chef. Chelsea. Hi. You have one of my aprons. So. You looked extremely flustered. Yeah, I was uh, overwhelmed. I just really wanted to do a good job, and I knew that I had left some fish on the carcass, and I was very disappointed in myself. All right, let's take a look at the carcass. <sighs> Let me tell you, your demeanor during that skills test does not necessarily show up on the carcass. You did a pretty decent job with a couple bits here yeah. that are left over, but as far as the center part is good. OK. All right, let's look at the trimmings. Yeah, here's where I think you struggled. You took off a lot of really usable parts. You probably have two more portions of meat in there. OK. Considering all of those miscues, there are some very beautiful portions here. And you got the cheek. Look, Chelsea, you got to really take care of that confidence level, because that shows up in all of your performance. So please harness that anxiety and turn it into motivation, okay. strength. Okay. It's not perfect, but good job. Shanika. Yes, Chef. Let's take a look here at the trimming, shall we? Oh, Lord. Shanika, that's not even one portion. It's Shanika. like two or three. Hearing the feedback, I'm a little nervous as they're walking around. They are judging critically. Farhan, this is a disaster. You've got half the fish on there. Not good. <sighs> SJ, there's some obvious gashes and quite a fair amount of meat. You know that's not what we're looking for. They are not letting anything slide. Jerron, what you did is you took a beautiful fish and you made, effectively, fish sticks. Sad. If you were hacking away at that fish or your cuts aren't concise. Bowen, not good, OK? They're going to call you out on it. Julia, look how much fish is left on the carcass there. It's shocking. Taylor, you missed the whole tail portion there. Too bad. So I'm just going over in my head, what could I have done differently or what could I have done better? I'm worried. Emily, Chef. how was that challenge for you on a scale of 1 to 10? Probably a 7 or 8. So just visually looking at the carcass. It is as good as Caesar's, immaculately done. Let's have a look. Nice, clean bones coming all the way through there. And also, it's not hacked. Really good. Nice and light. Um, bowl of trimmings. Skin. Perfect. These are like feathers. Wow, good job. Portion-wise, they look beautiful. Textbook. You've nailed it, young lady. Great job. Thank Emily, you. you can add fishmonger to the resume. <laughs> I will. Great job. OK, Ashley, hi. Hi, Joe. What was the hardest part of it for you? I just didn't want to pack it up. I really wanted to just take my time and at least get as much meat off, like a really smooth filet. I mean, this is the most fundamental cut of all, and you just totally missed it. There's like six ounces of meat there. More. That's, uh, that's a shame. It is. Let's see, what do we got in here? Where, where, where? Missing something. Where's the skin that you took off the fillets? I didn't get the skin off the fillets. Wait a second. Yeah. Did you just not even li listen to what we asked you to do? Wait a second. Did you just not even listen to what we asked you to do? I wanted to make sure I got portions on there and... 
you gave us eight portions, they're all unusable. You just took a fish that's worth several hundred dollars and destroyed it and did not give us one portion, zero. <sighs> that's, uh, that's a shame. It's extremely disappointing. I thought you were a better student. You are in trouble. What a shame. I'm crushed on the inside. I let the judges down, especially Gordon, my mentor. All of you, walk down to the front, please. And to feel like I disappointed him is heartbreaking. Tough challenge tonight, but some of you did us proud. Let's get that right. You actually paid attention, and being able to learn a lesson quickly is critical if you want to become America's next master chef. As your mentors, that is an essential talent that we are looking for. There are two of you that not just do a good job, but did an exceptional job. Emily, Caesar. Emily, Caesar, great job, you two. You're safe from elimination. Please head up to the balcony. Thank you. My heart is swelling with pride. The judges' critiques just validated that confidence in myself. I hope I make Chef Aron proud. And I'm just happy to have another opportunity to prove that I'm meant to be here. Now, you 10, you'll all be cooking in tonight's elimination test. But now with this next challenge, you've got a chance to redeem yourselves. And guess what you'll be cooking with tonight? Halibut. Halibut. That's right. Halibut is an incredible fish to work with. It's flaky and dense, yet Delicate. Uses for halibut are endless. For sure. Now, tonight, we want you to take that halibut that you worked with earlier and transform that into an incredible MasterChef-worthy dish. We are giving you total freedom to make anything you want as long as you make that halibut the star of your dish. Yes, yes chef. chef. You have access to the most amazing pantry. Alongside that, you've got the best equipment any chef can dream of. Viking stoves that are a dream to work and cook on. Use it to your advantage. Yes, yes chef. chef. A reminder, at least one of you will be going home tonight. You have 45 minutes on the clock. Your 45 minutes start now. Come on. Go, 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 I'm gonna get through this. Through it. Where are the carrots? Are the carrots anywhere? This is my chance to redeem myself from my fillet, and I need to show the judges that I have a lot more in my repertoire. Soy sauce. So tonight, I'm making a grilled halibut over roasted Brussels sprouts and asparagus, carrot and ginger puree with an Asian sauce. Let's go. Please. Go, guys. Hustle, hustle, hustle. You got this, guys. Let's go. Look at Farhan. Oh, my God. He took the entire spice cabinet. He's the OG spice boy. <laughs> so that was probably the most difficult skill test we ever presented to MasterChef contestants. Ooh, I don't know what to do. What's interesting is they're going to have to cook with what they left on the board. So they're going to have to deal with the results mm. of their filleting skills, which is a challenge because not everyone got the perfect fillets. Mm. I wonder if she's going to take the skin off or not. She better. The top 10 is around the corner. So tonight, we want to see finesse on the plate. We want to see some of those magical ingredients from that pantry utilized across this incredible halibut. Perfect. I want to see big, bold flavors. I want to see creativity. I want to see spice. Tastes good. This is a restaurant-quality protein. This is not a kind of fish you cook at home every night. I want to see these home cooks take this halibut and put it on a plate that I can sell for 40 or 50 bucks. Yep. Just over 35 minutes to go. What's Sam doing? Samantha. She's working with like mushrooms. Today I'm going to be doing a uh, pantered halibut on top of a, a mushroom risotto with sun-dried tomato pesto. I have no experience cooking with halibut, but I've been doing my studying, I've been doing research, so hopefully I can knock this one out of the park. Samantha's doing the risotto. Mm. I am making a pan-seared halibut with a fennel salad. It's going to have a brown butter vinaigrette, and then I'm going to do an avocado puree. And I have to prove myself today because I totally massacred that fish, and I am more disappointed in myself probably than the judges are. Let's go, Jerron. Come on. 
I'm making a pan-seared halibut with uh, white sweet potatoes, spinach, and onions. Uh, I'm making this dish because I love sweet potatoes. They're my absolute favorite. But I've never had a halibut before, so I'm just hoping that those flavors go good all together. Keep hustling, Jerron. Woo! Good hustle, Chelsea. Chelsea. Yes, Chef. What's the dish? So I'm going to do a kind of Thai inspired dish since I've got to travel to Thailand. And I'm going to do a Thai red curry with like a cucumber yogurt just to lighten it up because I want it to be spicy with bok choy and of course a pan seared beautiful halibut. Now that wasn't the perfect butchering. I was expecting more of you. I am very disappointed that I let my um, nerves get me and I am not going to let that happen again. Let's hope you come back strong with this dish, right? Yes, absolutely. I'm definitely going to make up for this. 100% Chef. Good luck. All right, Farhan. So, what's the dish? I'm making cauliflower couscous with an herb roasted halibut. You're using the carcass, amen. You're making a stock? Yes. Thank God, what's in the stock? So it's fennel, lime leaves, chipolini onion, chili de arbol. I got the spine of the fish to make sure I got some nice fattiness from it. <coughs> this sauce, all I taste is heat. Taste that sauce, you tell me what the problem it's is really with that sauce. It's really spicy right now. It's really spicy. Everything that's the problem with you in this kitchen is in that sauce. You're just so overspiced. Season it right now properly. Otherwise, guess where you're going? Home. Taste that sauce. You tell me what the problem it's is. It's really that spicy sauce. right now. It's really spicy. Everything that's the problem with you in this kitchen is in that sauce. Okay. You're just so overspiced. Season it right now properly. Otherwise, guess where you're going? Home. Hurt. Right, uh, SJ. Yes, Chef. Tell me about the dish. What are you doing? I'm going to be doing a pan-seared halibut with a Parisian gnocchi, pickle pear salad, and a pancetta leaf cream sauce. You're making gnocchi? Yes, Chef. Potato-based? Flour-based? Uh, Flour-based. Wow, I mean, it sounds super complicated. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm going to really do my best to really go out there because I know lately I've been playing it fairly safe and I really don't want to be uh, sent home because I didn't really try my best. But you know, I'm confident, you know, I got into this competition by cooking fish, so I think I can do it one more time. Yeah, but I give you that apron and I believe in you. Good luck. Taste everything, yes? Yes, sir. Let's see this. All right, so Ashley, talk to me about your dish. I lived in France for a year, so I am going for those French memories. I have my Parisian gnocchi batter, and then I am going to pan sear the halibut and some spinach. Ashley, you've had some issues with time management, OK? Yes, chef. So I need you to really step up and segment all the steps of your dish, OK? Her chef. All right. I'm so excited oh, to see these Parisian yeah. gnocchi. The shoot though, is so easy, and that's mm -hmm. so much quicker than mm -hmm. cooking potatoes. All right. Four. Minutes remaining. It's starting to get hot. Samantha, wearing my pin. She's making a wild mushroom risotto. One of the few fish that can take mushrooms is halibut. Yep. One of the smartest dishes I've heard. Super ambitious. I hope she can get it done. No, it broke. So Chelsea, I'm really worried about because she's doing an Asian-style curry. She's making a broth, but then she's doing like a cucumber cooling down raita, but she don't put yogurt into a broth. Absolutely. So a little bit strange. It doesn't sound right. She's wearing my apron. I'm really concerned. Oh, no, 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 none of that. Two minutes to go. Come on. Fish needs to be frying now. Why does Ashley leave it all to the last minute again? Last hustle, guys. Let's go. 60 seconds to go. Oh, my gosh. Ashley, plate. OK. Oh, man, this is so nerve wracking. 15 oh seconds remaining. Oh, my god. 10 seconds. 10, Ten seconds. Nine, 9, 8, eight 7, seven six, 6, 5, 4, four 3, three two, 2, 1, stop. Yeah. Wow. Now, that was a very, very difficult challenge, cooking with halibut. A reminder, at least one of you will be going home tonight. Right, first up, Samantha, please, thank you. This is my first time cooking halibut, and I feel like I cooked it really well. I'm proud of the color. It's got a nice, crispy exterior, and hopefully this will show the judges that I am deserving of that top 10 title. Samantha, describe the dish, please. So today I have a pan-seared halibut topped with a sun-dried tomato pesto on a bed of mushroom risotto. Why risotto? 
risotto is supposed to be creamy and there's kind of buttery feel to it, and I thought that would pair well with the halibut. When you look at that risotto, what does it tell you? It's undercooked. Yeah. When that center of that arborio rice is still bright white, it's like a filling in your tooth. It's going to be crunchy as anything. But fish, you've seared it beautifully. Really beautiful sear on there. Thank you. What's in the pesto? It is sun-dried tomatoes, olive oil, some toasted pine nuts, and some basil. So the pesto is way too rich and oily. Okay. And it sort of macerates the fish in a way that it sort of damages the taste. I fight for you every night in this kitchen, but I'm worried because that risotto is undercooked. Sorry, chef. You know, I think there's way too much pesto. It's a very aggressive seasoning with such a delicate fish. It needs acid, it needs herbs. I do like the idea of a risotto, I think, maybe with pumpkin or squash, you would have had a home run. There's just many different directions that weren't taken on this dish. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Ouch. I'm just starting to mentally pack my bags. I'm terrified right now. I mean, this could be my last time in this kitchen. Next up. Wearing one of Aron's aprons, please step forward, Farhan. I had bumps along the way with having to start over my sauce, but I love showing my heritage on a plate, so I made a brand new sauce that tastes just as good as the old one, minus some of the spice and the heat. I just hope that this choice doesn't come back to bite me. All right, Farhan. I told you I thought all the seasoning was off. I assume you fixed all the seasoning? I hope so. What's the dish? So it's an oven-roasted halibut with a herb marinade and a cauliflower couscous and a coconut lemongrass sauce. The way I really enjoy eating fish is in the tandoor. So I tried to mimic that as best I could. So I uh, cranked the oven up to 500 and left the fish in there to really broil it. So this filet of halibut never saw a pan? No, it never saw a pan. That's risky. Let's take a look. I assume you fixed all the seasoning? I hope so. Let's take a look. Wow. That's a lot, Farhan. Where do we get? Um, this is the perfection of length of flavor because it begins in the front, the heat goes down the side, Sweetness is in the middle of the tongue. It's the kind of sauce that is so provocative to your palate because it fires every aspect of your taste buds. Sweet, sour, salty, savory. Thank you. The cook on the fish, it is a triumph. It's flaky, it's light. That is on another level. You are taking your ability and sensibility with spice and beginning to understand the basic fundamentals of cooking. Thank you. And that is a one-two punch that will knock out a lot of contenders in this kitchen. Thank you. Good job. What's on top of the fish? Basil, some mint, and cilantro. How many times have I told you? It's basil. <laughs> mm. uh, delicious. Mm. Fish cooked beautifully. I'm just so pleased that you can remain a threat in this competition and stay close to your heritage. It's a really good dish. Great job. Thank you. Next up, SJ being mentored by myself. Let's go. I really try to do something completely out of my comfort zone by having all of these different elements and just trying to really wow the judges. So I really hope that judges can see that I've been learning and progressing in this competition. SJ. Yes, sir. Describe your halibut dish. Uh, it is a pan-seared halibut with Parisian gnocchi, a pancetta leek cream sauce with pickled pears. OK, so visually, it looks like you've overseared it. And then you turn it over, and it's actually worse. Why the leek cream sauce with the pickle? I thought that because the cream sauce was really rich, I wanted to kind of cut that with the pickled pears. Mm -hmm. 
not so. One thing you have got right here is the amount of acid. The pickling goes well with the halibut. But then the fish is way overcooked. I'm confused the way you work and what you finish with because you start off with all the right intentions and then you hit a brick wall and it all falls. And I know you can cook better than this. Yes, sir. Thank you. SJ, this dish is all over the place, man. That gnocchi needs to be coated and developed in the sauce so it actually has some moisture and retains some flavor. It's just overcooked dry flour. And then you have overkill on the pancetta so it's salty. And then you have some pickles trying to save the day. And these are just ideas that don't make any sense. Sorry. Next up, one of my home cooks, Shanika. This dish is everything that I am. It is colorful, it is sexy. And I feel like this is gonna get me out of that doghouse from totally massacring that poor halibut. What did you make for us? Uh, it is a pan-seared halibut on a fennel salad that has a ground butter vinaigrette with blood orange and Maya lemon. And the dish is just as I expected. It's perfectly cooked halibut. It's seasoned well, it's spot on. The flavor profile of all these citrus components is classic. You found your place in the kitchen, you find your place with your ingredients, you make it your own, and it all makes sense. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Joe. Next up, being mentored by myself. Taylor, please, thank you. <laughs> Taylor, describe the dish, please. I have a grilled halibut over roasted asparagus and Brussels over a carrot and a ginger puree. Grilling the fish, I like the idea. It's actually cooked beautifully in the center, but grainy puree and undercooked sprouts. We've got all the elements of a dish that could have absolutely sung beautifully tonight, but you continue to put the mistakes on the plate. Thank you, chef. Next, step forward, you're on. Talk to me about the dish. Panzer halibut on a bed of spinach and uh, onions, a white sweet potato puree, and a roasted red pepper cooling. The cook on the halibut is superb. Uh, the red pepper coulis, it's developed because you roast it hard in the oven. Your puree, it's light, it's airy. This is what this competition is about, seeing your growth. Joe gave you that apron for a reason. Fantastic. Thank you. Good job, Joe. Good job. Next up, wearing Aron's apron. Chelsea, come on up. I am so embarrassed by how flustered I got when I was filleting the hell of it that I want this dish to prove to the judges that I am confident and that I can cook and I deserve to be here. So Chelsea, nice plating. Thank you. What's the dish? I did a pan-seared halibut with a yogurt and cucumber raita with sauteed bok choy and a Thai coconut curry sauce. So when I cut it open, how should it look inside? I hope it's really shiny and cooked Let's properly see. and pretty. How's that look? It looks a little under. Yeah, still got some blood in it. Oh, no. It's too bad. Tell me about this curry. I did curry paste and I um, put it in the mortar pestle with garlic and peppercorn. <coughs> I didn't want it to be too spicy. Yeah, it's like eating a peanut butter cup on the front of your palate. Okay. And just getting punched in the back of your throat with white heat. There's not nearly enough salt. Yeah. One throw of salt would pull all that together. You're kind of off the rails on your seasoning. Like we're getting to a point now in the top 12, got to have the palate to be able to season. Okay. Very, very big seasoning errors here. Plate's almost unedible. You know, it's a bit weird to have that warm yogurt with a cucumber in amongst that pool of curry. Okay. The curry itself is way too rich because it's just so hot because it hasn't had a chance to cook out. But plating's beautiful. I just don't think that tonight has been your night overall. Thank you. Thank you. Next is a home cook that's wearing one of Gordon's aprons. Ashley, please step forward. So it came down to the very last seconds for me to plate this dish. I know I've cut it close before, but I hope the judges still see finesse on the plate and it tastes good. Ashley, all right, well, how would you describe the dish? This is a pan-seared halibut with cream spinach and 
uh, gnocchi alla parisienne. All right, well, first of all, it doesn't look like you had just under a minute to plate that. It looks wonderful. Thank you. Let's see how it tastes. Are you happy with the cook? I am. <laughs> what do you think? It looks good to me, chef. It doesn't look good to me. Let's see how it tastes. Are you happy with the cook? I am. <sighs> what do you think? It looks good to me, chef. It doesn't look good to me. That looks perfect. <sighs> Unbelievable. When you say you were going to Paris with this, I can just taste that French sensibility with the spinach and that wonderful gnocchi, lightly cooked. They're airy, they're very pillowy, soft. I think the, the cook on the halibut is textbook. It's balanced with the lemon. Um, the execution of this dish, it is just unreal. And I know you're wearing Gordon's apron, and I know he speaks French, but if you're gonna go to Paris and cook like this, can I go with you? <laughs> yes! <laughs> so this is unbelievable. Thank you. I am elated. I was recognized for something I put together with seconds left, but the technique was there. This, this smile is not going to go away anytime soon. That was a very intriguing challenge. Some of you really, really excelled, and some of you are in trouble. But there was one dish who really blew us away tonight. Congratulations, Farhan. Thank you. We're on the search across America for only one master chef. Unfortunately, that means somebody is leaving very shortly. If I call your name, then please make your way down to the front. Chelsea, Samantha, SJ. I'm not ready to go home because there's so much more that I want to show the judges. I haven't even had the chance to show off my heritage and my culture. Everybody else, congratulations. Please head up to the safety of the balcony. If I get eliminated right now, it'll break my heart. It was a tough night. Many home cooks excelled. You three, unfortunately, did not. Please step forward. Chelsea. Chelsea, you made some mistakes tonight. And as we move forward, there's no room for basic errors. And for that reason, tonight, Chelsea, you are going home. You made some fundamental errors. Under seasoning, didn't listen to direction. Errors that eventually will trip you up here in the MasterChef kitchen. Chelsea, please leave your apron at your station and good night. Okay. I'm disappointed, but the reason I came to MasterChef was to learn and to cook and be able to go into that kitchen. And I got to do all of those things. Bye, guys. When I first came into this MasterChef kitchen, I didn't have the confidence that I do now. And I know that my skill level has definitely increased. But I mean, I'll keep studying and I'll keep pursuing my dream, so nothing will stop me, and I'll, I'm gonna always keep cooking. Now, we're down to the top 11. Next will be the top 10. That's when this competition really takes off. And that milestone will happen right now. But more importantly for me, you're both wearing my apron. And so this pains me to send one of you home. Samantha, your dish was somewhat unfinished. SJ, you bounced around. You're all over the place. You get straight to the point. This is hard enough as it is for me. Samantha, you are going. 
up to the balcony. Say goodbye to SJ. Congrats. Good job. I am so relieved. The judges believe in me and believe I can go far, so I really have to step up my game and be nothing but perfect. I'm not taking this second chance for granted. SJ, you played like an angel, but tonight you presented me with a halibut that was so overcooked, I had very little to hold on to. Here's the good news. Don't let this now be a sticking point to where you want to go with this industry. Continue studying, graduate, and when that's done, call me. Yes, sir. This food dream is not over. I am going to promise you that my door is open once you finish your studies. Thank you. I'm just so glad that I was able to make it this far into this competition and that I've met all these amazing contestants and being mentored by the best culinary pillars in this industry was just mind-blowing, breathtaking, and I'm just so grateful for this opportunity. Please place your apron on your bench and have a safe trip home. Thank you. Good night, SJ. Thank you. SJ! I can't say that I'm not disappointed right now, but honestly, this journey has been so amazing. It just made me realize that much more that food isn't just a hobby to me. It's something I want to pursue, something I want to make my life. Even though I may be leaving the MasterChef kitchen, I'm never going to stop chasing after my food dream of having that Korean food empire. And when I graduate, I'm going to hit up Gordon Ramsay and go like, I'm ready. And just like that, we are down to the top 10. With SJ gone, that leaves Gordon with four aprons, Aron with three, and Joe with three. Every time you cook in this kitchen, bring your A game. Pressure is on more and more. There's just no room for mistakes. And I got to keep moving forward and staying strong for Gordon. Get some sleep. Good night. Next time on MasterChef. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. for dinner. When the top 10 cook for American uh, heroes. 100 airmen. This is massive. Expectations. Hang a steak. That's a no-no. Are sky high. These are incinerated. How do we sell that to the Air Force? Oh my god. We're getting invaded. This pork chop's completely raw. And I'm about to call for a mayday because we all might be going down. Go away. Go away. One potato, two potato. You've just taken a bite out of MasterChef. Now here are a few more shows to check out from Fox. Are you ready? You are hot. I'm in a sweet spot. I'm feeling good. The sun is shining. Wake up. Shower! Let's go!